Are we ready? Are we rolling? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Simpson County Board of Education. I'm Jim Flynn, superintendent, and uh, appreciate uh, those that are here in the audience uh, with us tonight and uh, those that are watching from home on television as we conduct the business of Simpson County Schools. I'd like to uh, thank everyone for helping us have an outstanding start to the school year. Uh, those things don't happen accidentally. There's a lot of planning and preparation that goes into it. Uh, but I want to thank all of our staff, our, our teachers, um, and uh, principals in our buildings, and our central office staff, uh, along with our students and their parents and everybody who helps uh, get them to school uh, safely and home safely. Um, a big thank you for a smooth start. Uh, I would like to uh, give some special shout outs. So uh, we had opening day for our staff uh, recently and uh, Hannah Hurston, a sophomore at Franklin Simpson High School sang our national anthem. The Franklin Simpson High School dance team along with the Sky DC dance team um, came and performed. Uh, fifth grader from Lincoln Elementary, Gunnar Gregory, uh, came and gave a talk um, and uh, kept us all in stitches. And I uh, uh, appreciate the, all of their uh, contributions. And then our board chair, uh, Mr. Webster, uh, gave a nice uh, talk and comments to our staff along with uh, Mayor Ronnie Clark. And then uh, Principal Tim Slosser also uh, gave a, a nice presentation uh, for uh, our opening day activities. And then I also want to thank uh, LifePoint Church who uh, provided breakfast for all our staff that day. Uh, and then just another big uh, shout out, uh, special commendation for our maintenance and custodial staff for all the work they did this summer preparing our schools uh, to uh, open clean, shiny, and ready uh, for everyone to come back. Uh, we are uh, over 3,000 students, including our preschool students who started this week. And uh, so, uh, uh, you know, also another big shout out to our transportation staff who get a big portion of those students to and from school safely every day. And then of course, uh, Sarah Richardson and our food service staff uh, uh, deserve some accommodations as well for all of those breakfasts and lunches uh, that they provide. In fact, uh, Mrs. Richardson told me that lunch participation is up significantly to start the year, and so that's a good thing. Um, I would also like to congratulate uh, all the young ladies that participated in the Distinguished Young Women of Simpson County uh, scholarship program last Saturday. All the girls did an amazing job. Uh, every single one of them won an award and a scholarship. Uh, and then Emily Schmieder was the overall winner and will go on to compete in Lexington this January uh, in the State uh, Distinguished Young Women uh, of Kentucky uh, scholarship program. So we'd like to wish Emily good luck in, in that endeavor and we know she will represent us well. Our fall sports seasons have started, and we want to wish all of our uh, athletes and other teams that compete, academic, marching band, and, and uh, some of our co-curricular uh, uh, clubs that will be competing this, this fall. Um, we love to see them uh, compete and, and demonstrate their uh, talents, so look for those events and come out and support our Wildcats. Of course, one of uh, the big things in our community is our homecoming uh, uh, for football, and no one does homecoming like Franklin Simpson. Uh, this year, the theme is the happiest week on turf. Uh, and so uh, homecoming is scheduled for Friday, September 28th, with lots of uh, activities and festivities going on all week long. 
the homecoming parade will begin around 1.30, and the game against the Allen County Patriots will begin at 7 o'clock, and so we hope to see you there. Uh, in fact, we open our home football season this Friday, tomorrow, against Monroe County, and uh, come on out and support the Wildcat football team. Uh, on uh, uh, September 13th, uh, classes will begin for the second year of the Franklin Simpson High School Fresh Start Academy. Uh, this academy is designed for adults 19 years of age or older that have previously dropped out of school and would like to obtain a high school diploma. And uh, even if you have a GED, you can uh, participate in this uh, program. And if you'd like more information, contact our Director of Pupil Personnel, uh, Mr. Joey Kilburn, here at the office at 586-8877, or you can email him at joseph.kilburn at simpson.kyschools.us. Um, those conclude the announcements. I'll turn it over to Mr. Webster to get us started. Thank you, Mr. Plan. I'd like to welcome all of you on behalf of the board and call this meeting to order. Uh, this one thing about this meeting, this is a special meeting, so the only items to be discussed is what's on the agenda. Nothing outside the agenda can be discussed on this meeting. Need a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Second. Second by Nancy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Next item is to recognize the GSP 2018 participants. Well, we're always excited for our students to be uh, recognized uh, for their uh, academic and other talents. And uh, we had a record number of students who were accepted uh, into the Governor Scholars Program. And then also one of, one of the young men up here uh, had a different experience this summer. We want to recognize uh, all these folks. So uh, help me recognize Lady Boyers. Lady Uh, Jenna Robertson is uh, able to be here. Just, uh, congratulations to Jenna. Uh, Andrea Skates. <laughs> Colin Preston. All of these students participated in the Governor Scholar Program this summer. And uh, just in a moment, you'll hear a little bit from each one of them about uh, their experience, where they went, what they studied, and what they liked the best about it. But then also, uh, Mr. Chaz Vinci uh, participated in the 2018 Leadership Enterprise for a Diverse America program. So congratulations, Chaz. Uh, and so, uh, Andrea, do you want to begin uh, and tell uh, everyone about your experience, where you went, what you studied? Uh, sure, I can. Um, I went to Murray State University for Governor's Scholar Program, and um, I studied business, accounting, and entrepreneurship as my focus area. And um, I really enjoyed getting to do that experience as my focus area because um, I'm thinking about possibly pursuing business in the future, and it was really nice to gain connections in that area and to learn a lot about um, the subject matter. And I met so many wonderful people, both in my focus area and out of the 343 people that were there. It was just incredible to make so many connections. And um, even with my general studies, which was another type of class that we had there, um, I was able to learn quilting. And it was just wonderful to immerse myself in new skills and new experiences that um, I had done. So I really appreciated the experience and the stepping stone of that is for my future. Well done. Congratulations. Lady, what about yours? So, uh, for GSP, I went to Northern Kentucky University, which is right to Cincinnati. So, I got a lot of chances to go to Cincinnati and, like, go to the aquarium and the Freedom Center for, say, um, for the Underground Freedom Center. And my historical analysis class was my focus area. And in that, we learned to write prints. We actually focused on problems that are currently in the Commonwealth, and we use spot grant proposals to form like some sort of solution to make a better, to just to make a better Commonwealth. So that's what we focused on my focus area. And we went on field trips to the uh, Frankfurt, to the Historical Society, where we researched about problems occurring in Kentucky. And my group, um, our focus was sex trafficking in Kentucky Derby. So we made a grant 
their proposal to the historical society to be able to help solve that issue, even if we can't completely solve it, but to make some sort of difference and our group actually for the competition. Um, and in my general studies class, we focus on all different types of problems with Latin Americans, such as environmental issues, uh, sexual sexuality issues, like equality and stuff like that, and social issues, all sorts of stuff. And I met all kinds of friends at GSD. Um, I was at Northern Kentucky University with her. Um, for my focus area, I studied, I studied visual arts. Um, and I was able to create a bunch of hands on, like really creative art projects that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, I was able to go to the Cincinnati Art Museum a few times, which is really nice. Um, and I really loved all the different like, hands on learning experience that I was provided. Um, it wasn't like a typical, you know, like a typical school day or anything. Um, and I also love all the diversity at DSP. We were exposed to like a lot of different perspectives and we were given chances to go to different places that we wouldn't before, like a mosque and a new temple. Um, it was just a really good learning environment. Yeah, good. Colin. Uh, I had a chance to study at Morehead State University. Uh, my focus area was film studies where I got to create uh, four or five short films. Um, and outside of that, I took a class where I studied time and the human perception of time. Um, but other than that stuff, I had a really fun time making friends and hiking um, in Eastern Kentucky and going on field trips to places like this. It was a good summer. Good. But now, Chad, you had a little bit different experience. I did. So I tell did. us about that. Um, so I spent seven weeks at Princeton University this summer for the Leadership Enterprise for Diverse America. Uh, and they take 100 students from across the country to gather there for those seven weeks. I was actually the only person from Kentucky there, so I got to show them a little bit of Southern hospitality. Um, but when we were there, I studied three separate classes. So the first one was in leadership development and community-based action. Um, so I learned from college professors and PhDs um, sort of about societal issues facing the country today, facing our local communities, and how we can create some tangible solutions for those problems. Um, so. That was one aspect, and the other aspect was college guidance and uh, college success. So we met with a private college guidance counselor and they helped us prep for our college admissions and helped us write our essays and helped us pick schools that were the best fit for us. And then our final focus area was SAT and ACT prep. So we got um, full ACT prep during that summer. Um, outside of that, we had writing instruction class as well where we conducted um, research within Princeton's uh, library and archive system. Uh, and my research was on electoral reform movements in the United States and how we can go about creating a more equitable um, electoral process for all citizens across the country. Um, and that was a really great experience to sort of learn what college is going to be like at the academic level and to prepare myself um, for those college level essays as well. Um, I got to learn from some amazing professors. Um, I got to meet some amazing people from all across the country, from, from California, there were two from Hawaii. Um, and I think moving away from the experience, the one thing that you'll really take away and that I took away was the bonds uh, created with the people there and, and the experiences that we made there. Um, so LIDA is actually a lifelong program. We're part of the cohort 14 for life. So they'll help us during college and then we get access to their network moving forward. So. Yeah, cool. Nice. Every one of you. I'm so glad you had that experience. And you represent yourself and your family and your community really well. And my last question for all of you is, would you recommend these kinds of experiences to, to other students that are following you here at Princeton? Yes. Absolutely. All right. Get, help us spread the word. And help people know what it takes to get accepted, because it is competitive. And uh, congratulations again. Let's give them another big round of applause. <laughs> Next item is the presentation of teaching and learning from the central office. We'll have uh, Chief Academic Officer Shalina Smith will lead this presentation.
in little facts. I know a lot of times I get up here and kind of talk about what we're going to do throughout the year and things like that. But, you know, this was a big initiative of ours um, this summer. And so um, just to kind of follow up for all of you all, um, I believe, if I'm correct, right, that Dr. Flynn and a lot of you went to the National School Board you know, Association's conference thing. And got to see a district present on how to prevent summer slide, otherwise known as the lovely summer uh, regression. And um, and so, Dr. Flynn kind of did a presentation at a board meeting where he kind of really showed how what can possibly happen over um, a student's lifetime in school, K through 12, if kind of summer they just hang out and they don't really um, engage in some meaningful experiences. He's actually done that presentation, just so you know. I, Leadership meetings, Obi Dave. I mean, he's not Greg, the same. I'm trying to spread the word. We want to close the achievement gap. The summer regression is. Well, you know, a lot of times we talk about sending these people to conferences and coming back and sharing it. We got our money's worth with, with Dr. Flynn. But, anyways, um, so really I just want to show you a few pictures. Well, the data is you, and I'm sure you always want to know this. Um, we set out to have somewhere around 50 or 60, because again, with the amount of time that I believe we had to, to prep this was, was a little bit of, of an issue of getting the word out, um, but we did have 32 first graders, second graders, and third graders, so 32 total, a mixture of uh, first, second, and third. It was kind of heavy on the first and third, but these were incoming students going to Simpson, and, and one of the things that we heard in one of the surveys was the fact that especially for the incoming first graders. The parents really appreciated the fact, just to get to know the building a little bit better. You know, they do the tours, but this was um, a lot better in their opinion as far as the transition. This is what the day kind of looked like for them, and, and this is kind of the cool part, too. You can kind of see where you, you go to something like phonics, mm, fun times, right? And then you go to a speaking activity, um, something that, with art, something that is a little bit more engaging than writing, in lunch and recess. I mean, we, we tried to, you know, kind of mix in <coughs> the learning opportunities um, with the fun stuff to you. And then here is a picture of all of our campers. They all got a t-shirt um, with the Camp Little Cat logo. And so, big shout out to Krista Jackson for helping us. Um, and I believe Gerald Crane did those shirts for us. And we also had a sponsor for that as well. So a lot of the, the costs we tried to keep down as much as possible. I believe it was kind of Ford and Robin Holland first that helped us um, with the shirts. And so you can kind of see some of the activities that they did. We had lots of animals per Dr. Flynn's request. He wanted animals and I think some kind of um, bouncy house. It was good times. There's Robin Holland's request. She did kind of more of an agriculture type um, thing um, lesson with the whole farm to table with um, the 4-H group. And here you see Scott Purdue, which I thought this was really neat. Um, Mr. Purdue runs around our district all the time doing a great job with technology and hardware stuff, but he actually um, worked with the students on virtual reality, and I think you might see that um, one of them might say it's one of their favorite things of the um, whole camp. And I believe that's Mr. Northern there. He did a lot of steam activities. Here's our lovely greeting dog, Manny. <laughs> so he came at least one time for each grade level. And I think that's back with Scott. Just see a lot of hands on. This is one of the programs that they use, the Success Maker, and that was again something that we're trying to use at Simpson to help build the reading, writing, and math skills. You see Ms. Thomas working on phonics, virtual reality again. Oh, I And I believe that's a coding activity with Mr. Northern. Oh, Miss Wade, and she did art with them, and as you can see, she had a big time. This was really neat. At first, when I looked at it, I was like, was that something with storytelling, pretty little pigs? No, it was an engineering type project, and they had to build a structure um, that could withstand um, getting blown down by um, someone. But anyways, this was the star scores now that we, we did star test them going into the camp, star test them at the beginning of the school year with all the other students, and as you can see, we saw an average increase of a 19-point scale score for each student. Grade equivalent was 0.2, which means about a two-month growth, which is pretty good when you consider we had them for three weeks. And again, it was we played a little bit of catch-up. We noticed that when we gave them the star at the beginning of Camp Little Cats, they had already started regressing from when we tested them in May. And so, and, and remember, they had the whole month of 
June off, pretty much. We started um, July 9th. And then percentile ranking plus eight, which, you know, that is very good, actually, but I don't, I don't put a whole lot of stock in that so much as I do. I, I put a lot into the scales for I think 19 is really good, again, for three weeks. And you have to understand, most of these kids did not come every day of those three weeks because people had vacation plans or, you know, vacation bottles. Well, they had different things they had to do as well. But um, anyways, so let's let the students actually talk to you. So Jordan, London, and JP Rains, do you mind to come up here? And again, I kind of gave you first and third grade, incoming first grader with JP Rains. And um, actually, she is an incoming um, third grader, but she will actually be leaving. And so I told one of her questions at the end, hopefully, um, she will be able to answer for us. So you can want to turn and face the okay, They like facing me. I like facing me. So, okay. <laughs> you want them to go over there sure, where the board can see you? Y'all go stand by Miss Smith and then. Because you really need to say, see JP smile. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Can you two tell them? And I, I told them that I would ask the questions that usually you all do. So we may let you have one or two, but we just, this can be a little intimidating. So um, can you tell me um, what was your favorite thing about the camp? Um, computers, because we get to do, um, we get to do the, and so Ms. Jackson, did she do that with you? What kind? What did you create on the computer? Um, I created a capsule. <laughs> you had like a book, type of, a virtual digital type book, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Beginning to end, which is kind of tough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, JP, what's your favorite thing about the camp? Good reality. Good. Good. Anything that you learned at the camp? That tadpoles grow into frogs. Another animal. JP, did you learn anything? Yeah, no. That. No. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. He's math. Look, lots of math in our team activities. I like math. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really good. <laughs> hey, JP, you do it all, don't you, buddy? That's awesome. Okay. Hey, Jordan, what would what? advice would you give, since you don't get to attend next year, you'll be going on to the big Lincoln school, um, what would you tell an incoming um, possible camper? That they should go to our school and find out about the Did you like the camp? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. What about, JP, would you go back to the camp next year if you got the opportunity? No, you're not going back. <laughs> that's that's a okay. so, yeah, I think he's confusing it, like thinking because on the way we were talking, and he was like, "No, I want to stay with Miss Spencer right now." Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's, okay. he's not understanding that uh, we're not saying right now. We're still staying with Miss Spencer. Yeah. Next summer. Next summer. Screwed up that question for you. That's. Would you like to come back next summer and do virtual reality again? Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Would you? Go, is there anything else you want to tell them, or do you want? Do you want to ask them one more thing? Is that your own risk? <laughs> what would you tell other kids so that they would go to the camp? Um, I would tell them that it's real fun to learn and that the teachers are great. The teachers were really great, weren't they? I mean. That was one of the things I kind of, I know they had the break, but you know, that's a, that was a lot to do, and especially in the summertime, and they seem to have just as much fun as the kids did, so thank you, Jordan. JP, you, you want any last words, buddy? I think he just wants to get that, that payday, right? That's a tough big word. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all so much. <laughs> What are the plans to be able to increase the attendance for next year? I know that we were really compacted to start earlier or sure. change up marketing. You know, we start a lot of our transition meetings more around that kind of March, April time frame because, you know, May is so jam-packed with testing and everything like that. So by that time, we should know who's kind of on our radars to possibly invite. So I think just inviting folks earlier, because, again, people had kind of set vacations already planned and things like that. Um, and again, 
again, just making sure that our, once you get those teachers, which that's, we kind of did things a little bit, we were trying to do them both at the same time, but I think once you set those teachers, they kind of get the word out there to you, and they had the kid in class, and so they start saying, I really want to see you, you know, go to the camp, and, and like you can see, they, they are even attached to their teachers. Um, I think at one point, um, I asked something to JP, and he was like, is Spencer there? Like, he, he loves when Spencer is <laughs> and I don't know. Like, no, I don't, I don't know if she's going to be there, but she needs to be there, you know, so. Um, but I think if they know, oh, I see my teacher and I feel comfortable with that, I think that would increase participation. And again, we made a lot of those phone calls at the central office level, which is completely fine. But when you get that phone call from the teacher or the principal, I think you're more apt to, oh, you really think this would help my child? And you have to understand, as a first, um, first time doing it, people really didn't know what all it would entail. My kids are going to be stuck on the computer the whole time. And as you can see in these pictures, they were actively doing things the whole time, inside, outside, all over the place. And a huge shout out to, and I should have already done this, thank you to uh, Jen Sheffield. She was the coordinator of that. Um, oh, she was the one on site pretty much daily, except for a few meetings that I think she had to do. And Mr. Barman for letting us use the building, and of course all those teachers that you saw in there were doing so. And again, it was like a district effort of people like Scott Purdue coming in and, and Krista Jackson and. Those are the times, again, in the summer, they're busy, you know, making sure everything's prepped and ready for school, and they were um, very willing to go and, and help us out with the camps. I have a question, but I wanted to direct it toward the parents. Um, compared to other summers, summer vacations and breaks, do you feel that your child was more engaged during the summer with activities like did he read more or did she read more over the summer break or even after camp was over? I think well, having I mean, the routine every day anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> having the routine was good for him. Because like our summers, me being off with him, we're just kind of flat out seeing our pants. So knowing that for three weeks we, you know, eight thirty to one thirty had like that routine. Um, but him coming over to first grade too, that him being there for three weeks was a good transition. But I think having the routine was awesome because at home during the summertime, I mean, we read, but it's not like everything that he got during that, that, those days. So did it continue after the three weeks? Did he still have that we eager? Still, he still wanted to. And then when school started, he was like, he would ask Ready. me, when do I get to go? You know, when, when, am, I, when am I starting school? Good. Jordan was really engaged with the technology that in the smaller group setting that way they got more help with the technology. She, after the first day, she was like, I want a Chromebook for Christmas so I can write stories and all of that. talk to Santa. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I walked in, which was some strange part, she was teaching, I think, um, Ms. London was in the hall at the time, but um, she was just like, oh, yes, like, you see the star stories? We went from this and it was huge. And she was so proud. And I said, well, yeah, but I bet you did a lot for that in the reading, so I'm not going to take all the credit. She said, I don't know, but I really do think it helped him. And so, and, and Chrissy was the same way as far as the whole, she really enjoyed it. I mean, I was kind of thinking I might have to come on, you just help me. Um, so they both um, very supportive of it, so I appreciate that. Great job. Yeah, I'm excited for yeah. next year. I know, I am too. And Jordan and JP, thanks for coming and helping us uh, with the presentation. You all did a great job. Thank Give them you. A <laughs> next is a visitor's comment. Next is superintendent staff reports. Okay, to keep uh, the board and the community uh, informed about uh, various metrics and information about our district, uh, we have the following reports. And of course, board members, if you have any questions, just uh, stop me and say, I want to know more about this. Uh, the first reports our personnel report. Dr. McIntosh is here. Uh, we also have our out-of-district student trips, out-of-district staff administrative travel reports. Then we have our uh, daycare financial <coughs> report, food service financial report, monthly district athletic report, monthly vendor report, monthly reconciliation and construction re reconciliation reports, our monthly visa charge report. Uh, and, and Chief 
financial officer Amanda Spears is here. Any questions? Uh, <coughs> we also have our annual notification of annual data security report, and uh, copied you all on my uh, notice to all of our staff about the importance of data security. Um, and then uh, we have a review of our ACT scores. Ooh. And ooh, ooh. Chief Academic <laughs> Officer <laughs> Shalina stop. Smith is here. We have some questions. <laughs> Remember Arnold Horsha? Did anybody remember? Yeah. That? No. Okay. Do it. <laughs> I am best on it. <laughs> okay. So, um, so my interpretation of the report, and I guess I'm just looking for confirmation that I'm understanding it correctly, is that the 15.9, that was a test that they took as they were entering high school. And that data is not, that first test is not on that re on this report. It's just a composite score that you gathered up and right. Okay. Remember in the past we were able to give you kind of like the plan score. <coughs> the plan was given in the tenth grade score was given in the eighth grade, so the score would predict what they'd make on the plan. The plan was a predictor for the ACT. So a lot of times we were able to tell you they're on track, not on track, and we were hoping for at least a two point gain between that plan and the ACT. Um, we don't the state doesn't do that. They don't even ACT doesn't even produce those tests. Okay. So we give them a practice ACT their freshman year, and okay. that is that 15.9 was there. Okay, and so they g gained almost three points in that three-year time period, which is awesome. It is. And would you characterize? And I don't know how to say this. I'm trying so hard not to be offensive. Um, every class has variability amongst its students and capabilities and, and what have you. And in my gray matter somewhere, I remember us <coughs> talking about this in with this particular group of students. Is that correct? That is correct. Have I been terribly offensive no, 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 or was no, I okay? Not at all. I mean, okay. That is correct. Um, their um, overall composite score has, has trended just a little bit lower um, than some of the classes before them, I think is, is what you're saying there. And But yet, that's why we try to still show you that, honestly, when you compare apples to apples, them to them, they agree. Yes. Um, and we were proud of that group. Yes. And you should be. <clears throat> it was awesome. And um, one of the other things that is bothering me, and it maybe shouldn't be bothering me, so I'm willing for somebody to say, don't worry about this, is when I look at the first page, and I'm looking at the novice and apprentice for math, reading, science, compared to the number of students that took the exam, it, it seems, it appears as though more than half of our group are not proficient and I think part of that is due to the new testing standards that came out last year is that correct yes, we have, okay we have never reported it that way okay we're going on just the ACT to pull out um, our math and reading because that's all that is in the accountability system right now not the science we reported it but it's not Right. Factoring into that, but yes, I mean those are troublesome numbers, and so we are um, looking at, as you can see on that last page, right. things that we can do to, um, you know, strengthen our core at the high school level. It, so one of my questions was, um, and I experienced this as a parent of high school <coughs> students, was the boot camp, and I was curious to know. I know that there's a lot of prep that goes into those weeks leading up to the exam, but do you think it would make any more of a difference or is it just at that point you're losing ground to extend boot camp or instead of having it three times a week, four times a week, I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking for your opinion. No, I, I think that's a great point. And yes, I, I do think extending that time um, would be beneficial and it's something that we can definitely Looking at academics, and he's looking yeah. at just about everything he can. Matter of fact, um, we're bringing you know in the case assessments to help us a little bit more so as well. K through 
We will do it K through second, but it'll be a different version. Three through eight is what we're going to start with, with just case. Um, but he's also discussed <coughs> picking that up at the high school level now for at least the math and the English. Um, because again, I think he's just wanting maybe a little bit um, better predictor of the individual skills in which he can hone in on and focus on for those kiddos um, so that regardless, I mean, of course we want them to meet those benchmarks, but we've also got to work on those novice and apprentice that's already just telling you, hey, this is, this is too many now. Yeah. Right. And you don't need to have a perfect ACT for everybody, but we sure would like everybody to be able to read. Yeah, yes. I get that. Yes, and that's why I'm making that big push to make sure that our third graders are on target. Because, you know, um, Mr. Schlosser's a big dad. I mean, you all know that. And he's looked up the data that some of these kids that are novice and apprentice as um, juniors, they weren't on the level they needed to be on in the third grade. Um, and so, but again, the work that Ms. Wright and Mr. Barnum are doing by getting these kids um, next grade level ready is so huge. And it's just been, um, we're, I, I think that's where we'll see a big difference, Steve. But again, um, we just got to make sure that we're, we're getting those benchmarks in the third grade. And then, you know, Dr. Flynn and our first ILTM talked to everybody about kind of back mapping that grade level readiness for, um, out of primary, which is that third grade, then again, an intermediate, are you ready to go on from Lincoln to the middle school, and then a middle school benchmark as well. So hopefully we put those things in play. Um, I think you'll see those numbers drop as well. Or, you know, go drop up. in the novice and yeah. and hopefully go up in the proficient and the distinguished. Well, great <clears throat> job on the three-point gain. I think that's awesome. And um, great job on the camp. Reading camp, I, I know it was kind of thrown at you very, very late in the year, but we sure appreciate you working so hard, and I think it looks like a great time. I think I might want to go. I want to do the virtual <laughs> round. I didn't do Yeah, and then we had a lot of, you know, the transportation, you know, made it happen because we didn't let transportation, uh, food service, make sure breakfast, snack, and lunch uh, every day, and uh, so and and some other partners, came, you know, came in. Uh, and you mentioned, I think, already that uh, I mean, we had some people that aren't traditional uh, teachers uh, who came in and did some really great things with our kids, and so I only see this thing growing. Bigger and better. It'll be a hundred kids, it's not fifty. I hope so. <laughs> that is really true. I mean, and we will make it happen. And I think having a few of them that get the word out there that they would love to come back and they would love to do it will we'll help us as well. Okay. Well thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions on the uh, ACT report? No. How do you ask them all for? Okay. <laughs> all right. I was all confused right. yesterday. I just want to make sure we discussed this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, the next uh, reports our fall sports schedule, and uh, then we have our drug testing report. Mr. Kilbert here, if you have any questions on it. I know we've been doing this for quite a few years now, and I saw there was eight positives in the kids that was tested. You you still see this as a as a positive move, or do we need to change something we're doing, or continue on with the drug testing, or? Uh, I think it's a positive thing uh, because I think it just puts or it gives kids a reason to say no and you know you don't really know who all it impacts in that way and the kids that are involved in athletics they, they know or, or extra any extracurriculars or driving to school or any that just opt in you know that they know that that's a possibility uh, if, if I was going to suggest anything I would suggest uh, more tests per year, but, you know, I don't know that's, uh, that, was, that was my thoughts, too. So. Right. You know, when we started, we, there was a grant that mm -hmm. paid for it, and we tested a whole lot more, mm -hmm. and when that grant went away, we kind of looked at what do our resources allow us to do, and this was the number, and I, you know, I, I think the number's a little bit negative, but it's just that, you know, kids don't really think about what are the chances I get pulled, just that there is a chance I get pulled, so, but, um, you know, I 
obviously over time there was a lot of oil. I don't know. If there was anything I wanted to do with it, it wouldn't be to do away with it. I do think it's a positive thing that we do. It keeps that awareness. It's a tool for parents, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a tool for our kids. But you know, if there was ever an opportunity to do more, I'd want to do more. Mm -hmm. That, that was our goal when we started talking about doing it, and I just want to make sure you were still seeing the same results all the way through and knowing it's going to make an impact on just to say no, that's what it's for. Right, yes, sir. Mr. Gilbert, do you know, I mean, is this a typical trend? I, I'm, I'm not recalling right off that, you know, if the number of positives, is that pretty in line, or is it less, more? It's, it's been about the same within, you know, I mean, as small as the number is of uh, positives, it's kind of been within a, a pretty close range yeah. of that number over the years. Since we've gone to testing this number of people. Yeah. Okay. Can we increase the number of people? And How to pay for, for it. it? Yeah, it's, she it's, said it's a cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, thought, I'm, I know you said, I thought you meant as far as frequency of you doing it. I didn't know the population was an issue. Well, uh, we, we pay for a certain number of tests. Yeah, so we, yeah. So we, we, could, we could ask them to, to test more, but there would be a, a cost associated with that. It's been a, several years, I guess, since we've looked at that cost. We can we can revisit that when yeah, we're we here. Anyway. And then there may be even see another provider. I don't know. Really, they were the only one yeah. at the time. I don't know if it's an industry that's grown or not. Well, there that, there is one, uh, actually, that I got a contact with. Because, you know, we don't, I mean, we had this this uh, random test with uh, these privileged groups of students or the opt-in students that Joey is reporting on. But we also have a lot. We do pre-employment screening. We do uh, uh, DOT screening. So we have a lot of other screenings that go on. Uh, Are they know, included in this number? And they're not in that number, <laughs> but we have a budget that covers those and that I, I don't know right off what we spend on that but um, that you know that was part of it and then when we I, I know when we kind of evaluated this when the grant passed it really the you know it's a it's a preventative measure mainly as, as Joey mentioned we want kids to say oh I can't do that because I'm playing sports or I'm driving and parking on campus uh, or my parents put me in the drug testing program and I can't take a chance you know to in, if I were to get called to be tested and so uh, that's the main purpose of it and that's what we that was our main purpose when we did it so many years ago um, uh, but uh, but anyway it, I guess you know that that is a good question for us to maybe do some analysis on is would there be any value in more tests or is really the number of tests we have adequate for that deterrent factor for most kids? Um, so I think we'll let, let us think about that a little bit. I mean, we haven't really thought um, about that in a, in a good while. Do the kids know when they're coming in to test? No, they do no. not. The staff does not know when they're coming in to test. Uh, the company contacts Cindy Phillips. She is the only person that knows she is the only person they communicate with. They set up a date. The principal, assistant principal, teachers, nobody knows until that morning when they show up on campus with a list of numbers, not even names, but numbers that match some numbers on another list. And then they have the system to where, you know, there's no no way that anybody is hand selecting who gets tested, who doesn't, who's going to be there on those days, nothing like that. I mean, they really have systems in place to make sure that it's that it's random and that it's uh, done with integrity. Yeah. In fact, every year when we talk about doing this report, you know, Joey's like, well, they will not talk to anybody but our district charge nurse, and is Cindy Phillips. Yeah, I would, I'll, yeah, because it'll get into the summer and then Cindy's gone and I'll be able to say, hey, can you call and get this report? Because I've emailed them before and they're like, we're not talking to you about this. <laughs> Yeah. Cindy's got to request it, they send it to her directly. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she gives me the number. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. And then uh, the last report, just as a, an update on the vestibule design concept uh, 
for Franklin Central High School. So you have some drawings in there uh, that uh, give you uh, an idea. Mr. Delp's here. I think we're very close to uh, having some bids come in, uh, prices yes. come in. The goals have some bids uh, from the September 11th meeting for the task force, and then hopefully they'll be ready for proposal to the board. I like it. Mm -hmm. When are you hoping to get started? <coughs> Do you have a Do we have to do any rerouting of the kids or if that construction area will be we think it ought to be pretty quick. I mean, it's just kind of storefront, you know, okay. glass. Uh, so I would anticipate it wouldn't be that it's not, long. It's not really uh, deteriorating the foundation of the building. It's just sort of creating something Interior. within what already exists there. Okay. And the top of it's open, right? Yes. Yes. So the way it kind of meets the air conditioning uh, and all the yeah. curves and, you know, HVC is not an issue. So you know, it should be a pretty and uh, we are making a lot of progress on implementing our safety measures uh, in, in fact I was in a, a, a well we opened the edge Academy and so one of the kids was like I see everybody with those now what's why what why do you have these so I was telling them you know about well all the people adults that work here are gonna wear one of these so if you see someone with one of these badges that's somebody you can go to for help or you can trust them and you know so the kids are noticing in them and uh, so you know we've implemented those we uh, our protocols if you try to go into a school they're going to ask you uh, a, a list of questions that mr kilburn developed and uh, work with our uh, all of our receptionists and, and uh, so they're doing those kinds of things and lots of other things that uh, uh, we're, we're implementing and uh, have great partnerships with our local law enforcement emergency management uh, that are helpful. In fact, I got stopped by a parent today. I'll share this with the board and, and the public. Just tell me how they really have noticed the uh, security efforts and the supervision. Uh, they were talking particularly at the middle school and they like seeing the officer welcoming uh, students into the building and like to see the staff in the locations that they are there and uh, so uh, you know so far so good and we're continuing with some other things that are on the list uh, and uh, working toward uh, those improvements but uh, it's going well so far good that concludes the reports thank you the next item is the consent agenda Do I have a motion motion second. second by nancy any discussion on any of these items other than there's a lot of fundraisers on there. Yes. <laughs> Beginning of the year. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. No. Any opposed? Motion passes. The next is the action items, and the first one is to approve the unaudited annual financial report. Motion. Second. Second by Jennifer. Discussion on this item. Well, you have a copy of the unaudited uh, <laughs> annual financial report, or AFR. We usually refer to it, and our chief financial officer, Amanda Spears, is here. Amanda, do you want to comment or entertain questions? Uh, so we ended on a good note for the year. Our auditors came a couple weeks ago. We're still waiting on final reports. We'll have another entry or two to make. It won't affect the bottom results, but they're just on behalf of entries that the state hasn't released yet. Comments? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Next is a request to approve a contract of employment for hearing impaired teacher for specialized programs department. Motion. Second. Uh, Heidi, second by Jennifer. Discussion on this item. Uh, well, you have the proposal in your packet, <coughs> and uh, our Director of Specialized Instructional Programs is here. If you have any questions, it would be Maxwell. And, uh, uh, but uh, this is, you know, will fill a need of, a, of some students that uh, need these services. Would you have anything to add? Uh, Katie requires, or the state requires, that we do service 
you know, students that have any type of disability. And <coughs> we don't have a teacher. We have to submit a waiver to them. And so we contracted at the end. We, we have not been able to find one in quite some time. And uh, one of the, she's actually a retired teacher, Major Whitburn, and contacted me. So we were great to have her as a resource. She used her at the end of last year. We have a couple of preschoolers that are hearing impaired, as well as two students at the middle school. Um, we've got one that's moved in at the high school that we're testing as well. Um, so she attends the meetings. Um, she works with the teachers and helping them utilize resources in the classroom, as well as working with the students and learning and teaching them how to adapt and give them strategies. So um, it's a much needed um, position. So we just contract her as she's, as she's needed for whatever their IEP requires. Comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is a request to purchase a vehicle for the regional training center to be funded from RTC grant funds. Motion. Motion Second. Second. Right. Nancy, discussion on this item. Uh, well, you have the documentation in your materials. As you all know, we are the fiscal agent for the regional training center. It's a, a preschool support. Uh, agency that serves about 30 some odd school districts in our area and uh, but uh, we uh, we act as their employer basically uh, but they are funded through a state grant and maybe even some federal funds that flow through the state uh, but they travel a lot so they're wanting to uh, purchase a new vehicle a 2018 chrysler pacifica and uh, uh, the best bid uh, was from hunt ford here locally so we're asking you to approve all in favor aye, aye. Any opposed next is the request to approve the regional training center consultant employment contracts motion, motion by nancy second by jennifer discussion on this item uh well i think they got some additional funds uh, for a specific uh, initiative and uh, they've got a couple of uh uh, little temporary contracts that uh, they're wanting approval on and again you know we're, we're there it act as their fiscal agent employers uh, essentially so the board needs to act on this so that we can pay these people for these services so we're asking you to approve as it presented uh, not very you know not very big contracts but just like everything clear for everybody Questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next is approve the proposal to extend hours for special education instructional prayer educator at Franklin Simpson Middle School. Motion. Second. Motion by Heidi, second by Nancy. Discussion on this item. Um, <clears throat> you have a, a proposal uh, submitted uh, again from Whitney Maxwell uh, uh, to extend uh, a the hours of one of the paraeducators from the, I believe seven hours to eight hours. And uh, uh, Ms. Maxwell can answer any questions if you have any. It's an MSD classroom. It's a very um, high need. We have several autistic students in there as well as health issues in there as well. Um, so we did staff with another um, paraprofessional this year. Um, but since the students arrive early and there's several of them that are getting there off of the bus early and then having to stay a little bit later on with all their special needs. Um, we needed someone that was consistent with them to be there early in the morning and then to be able to extend um, and be there after school and sure they're getting on the bus and, and what it is taking a lot of extra hands. But having that little before and a little after um, school time has been much needed to extend um, employment for one of those parents. And this particular parent is doing an outstanding job. I've, I've been uh, pleased, very, very pleased with how things are going uh, with the whole program. Yes, but a lot of high needs, um, behaviorally, um, as far as health and academic all in this classroom. So we believe we need the extra time for this. Knock on wood, it's going very well. <laughs> Questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next is a request to approve the 2018-2019 Local Planning Committee. Motion. Second. Nancy, second by Jennifer. Discussion on this item. I think uh, 
I mentioned to you before, I can't recall if it was in a regular meeting or in a work session, but it is our year, again, to <coughs> develop a district facility plan uh, for the school district. Uh, as you all know, it's a very important process because not only is it our opportunity to, to kind of dream about what it is we want and need uh, for our students uh, uh, relative to facilities, and uh, uh, but it's also uh, affects our relative portion of the facility funding uh, for uh, uh, future construction needs. And so uh, we're going to undergo this process, but the board needs to approve the local planning committee, which has a very specific makeup, includes our you know, teaching uh, staff, administrative staff, there's a board representative, there are parents and community members and uh, the local building inspector. Uh, we've already hired an architectural firm to do the architectural services, RBS Design Group. Uh, they're helping us. And then uh, one of the things I want to remind everyone is that in the past we've hired facilitators uh, to uh, with the process because it's a pretty complex process. But uh, Mr. Delk and his roles, the director of operations, is going to facilitate that. So it's saving us some the month, some money, a uh, pretty nice chunk of money. Uh, but he's working with our design professional uh, there at RBS to uh, uh, get this process outlined. We've been in contact with James Bauman at KDE. He sent us all the materials to get started. So step one is the board approving uh, the, the local planning committee makeup. And uh, you have uh, uh, that material uh, in your uh, packet and so Mr. Delk uh, is here he can answer any questions and, and do you have anything to add Mr. Delk? It looks like I need to congratulate Ms. Stone. <laughs> <laughs> well she was not at the meeting when the board decided no. <laughs> I think we had talked about this uh, and she was I think willing to do it right. I think she, I think she forgot. She <laughs> Did you forget? <clears throat> I gave her her reminder. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, we, I think we've got a, a, an excellent committee, uh, and uh, as long as you all approve, we're going to get started. Mm -hmm. Any more questions or comments or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Speak. <laughs> Next item is a motion to adjourn. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> you, 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 you said you were here. There's a little bit of fun to get together and you go from school to school and look at the movie to the school and you go to the school and they want to meet the state of the party. Okay, have a good evening. You too. I hope you get some keys. I think I think I will be here. So, when, where, how? Well, they'll get, a, get together. Oh, it's get together send out it's out. Yes, uh, she so called today and yeah. said, See, Mom, up, hand up, you got my coffee didn't turn out the stuff. way that you well, make hers. <laughs> She's using those little tiny yeah. 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 spoons, those little plastic yeah. Yeah. things yeah. to what measure out her pockets. She needs to yeah. carry it. She needs to yeah. carry it. Yeah. 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 So Cynthia yeah. got one. Yeah. They're all over. Good it's over, you know. Yes, that's right.